Welcome to the Customer First Show, putting customers at the heart of your business. So good afternoon and welcome to our latest episode of the Customer First Show. Today, I'm really pleased uh, that we're going to have a look at a very creative uh, mind and we welcome Sirti uh, to the show. Sirti, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes, of course. My name is Sirte Pihlaja. I come from uh, Shirute. We are the first customer experience agency in Finland and uh, we just turned 10 years old. I have um, more than 25 years of experience in, in customer experience related uh, job roles from previously from big uh, IT consultancy groups, uh, been working both uh, with domestic clients and also uh, globally international with international clients for, for whole, the whole of my career. And uh, I'm also uh, heading the activities of the Customer Experience Professionals Association in uh, Finland, being one of the founding members and uh, one of the, uh, I'm also on the advisory board internationally. There. Yeah, so I've seen that. So you, you, you're part of shaping the direction and you have been doing this for a while now. So uh, you're, as you say, one of the founding members, you, you really help shape a lot of the, uh, the current profession, would you say? Is that fair for me to say? Well, I would say so. It seems it seems that I'm, I'm, I start to be the oldest one on the job usually nowadays. Wonderful. So, so, and, and also we have been trying to, with, especially with C, the CXPA, we have been trying uh, for eight or nine years already now that we've been running it since 2013. So uh, elaborate uh, or, or uh, help people develop their customer experience and uh, management skills uh, at, at large in Finland. And also a little bit uh, abroad because uh, this fall we, we did the global CX day with 10 countries that participated. Mm. And you're also championing sort of CX in the Nordics region. Uh, just tell us a little bit about that, you know, what that work involves, please. Well, championing in the Nordics and also I have, we have, uh, we're starting a, an agency in, in Singapore. So hopefully in Southeast Asia so soon as well. Um, but uh, mainly it's been consisting of, of just gener generic uh, customer experience management related work. Uh, mostly, I would say strategy uh, in the strategy sphere, uh, and and then uh, well, of course, we did a lot of uh, voice of customer uh, related uh, projects uh, a few years back. Now, I, suddenly, it seems to be coming back. That I guess it's the second round of, of organizations are, are picking up that hey, we yeah. should be maybe listening and understanding our customers a little bit better. And would you say that should be an ongoing, um, an ongoing thing, right? We can't just do it once and then sit back for 10 years and wait for the next chief executive or chief marketing operator to come, a marketing officer to come, right? It should be an ongoing thing that companies should be doing anyway, would you say? Totally. And nowadays, I think that it shouldn't be just about the voice of the customer. It should also be about the voice of the employees and the voice of the process. So you should be combining or marrying all of these different voices together to make it, make it work as a whole. And I mean, customer journey mapping is another great uh, example where people have uh, so far make it, been making customer journey maps as, as some kind of a, you know, check in the box kind of exercise, but it's really about managing those customer journeys. So you can, you can create these international custom, inter, international custom, intentional. Colors. Intentional. <laughs> yes. That's okay. That's okay. I know what you're saying. So, yeah, so, so so lately I think that people have uh, also been doing a lot of customer journey mapping uh, related work and uh, I don't think that that should uh, either be a, you know, check in the box kind of exercise, but rather you should be thinking of how could you really manage those uh, customer journeys so that you really mm -hmm. get those uh, intentional customer experiences uh, delivered to your customers. So I'm going to pick up on that quickly because um, that's something I, I agree. I've seen a lot of that where people think they need to do a journey map or a profile because they need to do one. But with any tool, there's no point doing a tool or doing a model unless you're going to use it for the right reason. Is that, uh, is that something you'd agree with? That's correct. And I think that the customer journey mapping exercise should be always uh, really, really connected or tied to uh, these kind of development maps that would, or, or whether it's customer journey maps or voice of customer related uh, customer feedback that what are you actually going to be doing with that all, all of that data that you get 
So another area that where we are quite active is customer intelligence, which is basically uh, the part where we're taking all of that data and, 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 and uh, merging it together to understand really what to do with these customers, how to better serve them. No, really good, really important as well. Um, so I introduced you as, as someone who, who tries to focus on the creative side. And obviously you are very much involved with the CX play. Tell us a little bit about what that means uh, at a high level, and then we'll go into it a little bit deeper in a second. Right, so you must be referring to, to me playing with Legos with adults. <laughs> so so uh, we have been bringing the Lego serious play uh, methodology and materials into CX related work and development. Because uh, I was uh, for quite a while, I was many years looking for uh, creative methodology that would really uh, get the, the best out of people who were uh, participating in workshops and, and who were creating these customer experiences. Mm -hmm. Because I think that if you if you take I don't know three teleoperators such as we have here in Finland that are competing against each other, uh, they more or less have the same uh, basic set of skills uh, as far as their uh, background is concerned and their uh, training or, or uh, skills are. And and then to really get that that last bit of of innovate innovations and and ideas and, and inspiring people to come up with uh, very new uh, solutions, you need to somehow be able to open up your mind to not be exactly like the next the, the competitor next door mm. yeah and and be able to show off why you're different i guess and you know why pick me rather than if everyone's just the same then we can just pick on price or, or availability right we don't pick on anything in terms of a specialism or a service right i mean we've been all reading these uh prophecies about uh how product and service will not be the uh, differentiating factor in 2020. I think that passed already. <laughs> but I think that we, we are really we have really learned uh, last year that uh, in, in 2021, what you need to be uh, concentrating on is and differentiating you with is the customer experience. Mm. And, and, and then you need to, to really put your mind into it so that you, you, you don't go with, the, with every, what everybody else is doing. Yeah. And, you know, I had a discussion a few days ago with somebody exactly about, um, you know, customer experience is saying, oh, it's something we're developing and it's, it's, you know, the last 10 years. And I sort of pulled him up and I said, look, customer experience isn't a new thing. It's not been 10 years. You know, I can remember 30, 40, 50, 100 years ago. I can't remember that far directly. But, you know, it starts when uh, you know, if you went to a local business and that business maybe ordered you some special uh, cheese or a special newspaper or, you know, made a friendly smile and a welcome, that's how they used to differentiate. So customer experience isn't new. What we're saying isn't new. What we're saying is that we really need to understand now because everyone's, if everyone's going to be, um, you know, deliver the same kind of quality of products. What we're talking about is how can we be more creative maybe? And how can we be more customer specific? What what, what would you uh, describe that as? Yes, I, I think you, you have right, you have got it right there that um, we used to go to these convenience stores and, and they were called convenience for, for a reason because uh, they really thought about your needs and, and what you were expecting to get. And, and somehow we have drifted into this world where companies and organizations are becoming bigger and bigger and, and the client or the customer isn't that important to them anymore. They, they sort of forget where the money comes in from. Mm -hmm. so, so therefore, I think that where you should be really focusing on now is, is your every single customer. I mean, I mean, there are, of course, ways to, to, to talk, think about them as, as a mass, but you shouldn't be thinking about them as a mass. I hate the fact when, I don't know, I, if I go to a hotel, and, and the first thing they ask me uh, there is, what's your booking number? Then, then I go and, and have a breakfast. They, then they say that, hey, what's your room number? And, and when you, when you, you know, uh, check out, they, call, they ask for your credit card number and, and so on and so on. So you're always just this number for, for them. Or if you call, I don't know, a support center, you're, mm. most of the time you're some ticket number for them. So that's something that I don't personally don't want to experience and I don't want anybody else to, to have to endure that either. So people have names, Naeem, Sirta, you know, mm. <laughs> and they have st backstories. So you should, you should really think about that. No, I agree. And we could get into a discussion about Google Glass here, which I've seen, I saw the demo at least five or six years ago now. It's a shame that's not come to full, but what I'd like to talk a little bit more about is, could you go in a lower level and tell me a little bit more about CX Play? 
and give maybe some an examples of how you help this happen. And originally it was meant for um, strategy work. So there's mm -hmm. a, a bit uh, an application for strategy work. There's an, a bit which is for identity uh, building and, and culture related work because you know how culture eats uh, strategy for breakfast. So they, they decided, they realized that they needed something to, to really help them to uh, get those strategies into action. And then there's a third application or fourth actually uh, that which is called the beast, uh, which is about uh, situations situations that are a lot like the current current day where we are living in, where uh, there's a lot of disruption in organizations. They might have mergers, acquisitions. Uh, they might need to um, put different companies together and 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 have a you know new new look at their uh, culture, how they're and and customer experience for that matter, how to to uh, serve their customers better. So we have, um, based on those applications, which are the original ones, and uh, some, some work that we have put into it is that we have come up with this application called CX Play, which is then uh, specifically meant for uh, customer experience management related works, such as uh, CX strategy building or uh, customer journey mapping that we were mm -hmm. discussing earlier on. Or, or you know, creating personas, all of that basic stuff, but also going uh, to towards uh, cultural uh, uh, changes, transformation, all of that, okay. and really helping to to create that framework, CX framework for for your company, and how to create these uh, customer experiences with an agile approach. Okay, and can you tell me, uh, you know, some examples of where you've done this, or you know, why do you think this approach is working? I, I almost feel like it's the play element, you know, unlocking the creative side. But you tell me how how do you think this works better than say some other approaches? Uh, I would say that it fast tracks all the all the uh, discussions that people have around the different subjects because when they really they are set into that uh, that uh, workshop with the Legos, they they start to uh, get into this flow mode. And that's the whole point of, of using the Legos is that when you're in play, you're, you're certainly you're just giving all of your in. Uh, we call them also lean forward meetings because instead of, you know, leaning backward and having their, maybe their arms crossed and looking at their phones constantly, people instead what they're doing is that they're getting up, they're talking to each other, they're talking through the Legos. Mm. And they, they have a totally different language. I always used to say to people that we're, got, we're on a language course today. So I'm going to teach you a totally new language uh, when, when uh, we do this workshop. And it's, a, it's, lot, it's lots of fun, but it's not only about the, the fun factor, because it's definitely not team building. You can't just, you know, lay a bunch of bricks on the table and say that, hey, go, go forth and, and, and play as you know. That uh, you need to have this uh, very strict um, methodology and for facilitate faci mm. facilitating those uh, meetings as well. And cool. the way the, the the Lego Series Play workshops go uh, move forward is that there's always a skills building uh, part in the beginning. So it's kind of a warm up, but where you're also actually learning what to do with those Legos. And then the facilitator gives you these challenges and. Uh, uh, each person individually uh, creates their models as their response to the challenge that they have been uh, given, and then they um, explain or describe their their uh, own response or their models to everybody else. Everybody else is to listen very carefully to what people other people are saying around the table, and then uh, once everybody has uh, had their say, uh, then the next round is about creating a common, a shared model or, or a landscape model together so that they put all of those views together. So the, the main thing here is that everybody got, has got their say into the thing and, and, and it uh, gives them more, more of this feeling of participation and you know it, they get much more engaged. Uh, and while doing it through this playful lens, uh, looking at your business, it's, it's a totally different thing. So in terms of, the way a workshop might go you know it, some people might find this difficult to sort of understand how, the, how it can go can you can you maybe give me an example or two how you've you've done this for a client and uh, you know the kind of outcome or what they've achieved with that kind of uh, approach of course uh, so the easy, or the, at the most basic level what we do is that what we have been doing for instance with banks uh, is that uh, we have been uh, creating these personas with them so that they, they have a, re a representative of their uh, customers and client clientele and then creating customer journeys with those uh, person for those personas 
and really having these conversations around these people that instead of putting you know adjectives into a box we're rather discussing about the personas who, who they are what their characteristics are and and it gives a totally different uh flair to personas when you're do, doing this with little minifigs or it, it doesn't need to be minifigs it, it could be you know metaphorical concepts of, of people and what their uh different uh uh, likes and, and and wants are so it's and it can bring that to life can't it it can bring that person to life you know it's it, it sounds like if I see a little character I can feel and I can visualize that person a little bit better than just thinking of a piece of paper is is that is that right that's correct because the conversations are always around the models and people are not we're trying to create this uh safe environment where people can share their ideas and, and understandings of, of their customers and whatever uh, opinions they have about them so that they can share everything about those uh, little customer minifigs that they can think of. Oh, brilliant. And then you also mentioned that, you know, obviously then people bring uh, their worlds together within the company. So from an employee point of view, I'm guessing that has another positive impact on, on that side as well? We have been doing t some totally uh, different kind of work workshops uh, then with uh, on, uh, re related to employee experiences, really, mm -hmm. with this big uh, media company or group uh, um, where we had um, two different uh, business units that got merged together and they had quite uh, different uh, uh, cultures or com like working cultures to begin with and with them they had they had a kickoff day where we half of the, the day was uh, using Legos and Lego serious play to have these conversations between the employees so that they could share between each other their understanding of their clients and, and their customers, but also of the way of work that they want to uh, be perceived and what they thought was a good employee experience in their previous uh, jobs or previous uh, business units and so on. So I got we got a lot of uh, feedback from the, that uh, workshop that they were actually coming much closer together because they had had these talks than if they had had you know a survey where somebody would just even talk something so it, it brings it to these conversations into life in a totally different way brilliant and i've heard so many good uh, piece of feedback from this you know even uh, we was uh, running a cxpa uh, or I was listening to a CXPA event in the US and um, someone mentioned your name and I was and they were saying how how positive the impact ha uh, had on the workshop uh, because in a way it was almost like we're just with Lego you know we're not dealing with serious things but obviously inside there is a deeper <laughs> serious element but I think it allowed people to unlock some of the barriers they had to maybe uh, discuss what they maybe would have been scared of doing before is is, is, is that something you've seen regularly yes and that's, that's actually something that I have uh, not more more often than not had uh, people come to me after the um, workshop First of all, there's these people who are enthusiastic about it and who are more extroverts who say that, yeah, yeah, that, I, that was so like, I feel so, you know, ha having, I've never given so much out of myself in, in you know, one day's workshop or half a day or whatever it has been. But then there's the, this other part where, where people who are more like introverted, who get to say their thing out loud once. So they get to participate with everybody because they're all on the same level together. And, and sometimes I get these other people who are then referring to these introverts that I, hey, I didn't know that that guy was so clever that he's never yeah. uttered a single word in, in when we've had meetings. So it puts somehow everybody on the same level of, of discussion. And, and it doesn't want, kind of matter what role you have in the organization because mm. everybody gets their, their uh, turn. Yeah, no, good, very good. Um, okay, let's move on a little bit. So you also... Um... You also deliver a lot of these workshops around the world, I understand. I mean, how is that changing now? Uh, COVID, can't travel. How, how do you scale that up now? How do you get your, your Lego play, the benefit of it, around the world? How is that going to work? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh... I did. I did run around with, you know, huge luggage, <laughs> luggage with suitcases with me all around the world, to Singapore, to to the US, to wherever UK many times, for instance. Uh, it was a burden, really, to 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 go with those Legos. Mm -hmm. So, and and I, of course, it has this um, 
this environmental uh, aspect as well to, to think of. But uh, we have actually been able to, this year um, to develop an, an online version of CX Play. So whatever we have been doing uh, face to face earlier on, we are doing it now online. It's just a question of getting the right camera angles and, and getting everybody you know, into the play and, and really put their minds into it. And uh, I think that one thing that usually people are saying that they are so fed up of these, all of these Zoom me meetings, you know, back mm -hmm. to back for the whole day. But when they're doing the Lego stuff, they don't realize that they, once they're into the flow, they don't even realize that, hey, we're not in the same room really. That that's yeah. the kind of uh, feedback that I have be, at least been receiving. That hey, you must be doing something right because I didn't realize I was in front of my Zoom. <laughs> no. no, brilliant. And I guess that's that's something we all need to do. So tell me also then about um, your CX2 uh, customer experience to book inclusion. Um, obviously, your chapter was around your CX Play concepts, but uh, how is that, how has that helped you, or what's that achieved for you uh, being included in that project? Uh, actually, my my chapter was about the the role of play in in growing business. So it was the case example that I brought forth in it was Lego Series Play. But in to to put it into the context, I think that really it, it is about the play aspect in it and 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 getting everybody on their creative side. Um, the thing is that you don't need to be like these Googles and, and company who, where they have playgrounds and slides and whatever, you know, in the in their buildings. I don't know. But uh, rather, it's about what you have between your own ears. What's what's important that you can really change your mindset by by using these methodologies. And that's the most important aspect that you, you get from it, that uh, don't take it so seriously, even though it's serious. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it so much much easier. And to your other question about uh, what the, the book has given me is, uh, of, of course, a lot of lot of new friends actually because there were twenty three uh, other co collaborators uh, in addition to myself writing this book. So I've got this whole network of people that I know know now, and and that that has actually been one of the main. Uh, th I think things during this year that I, I have another network that has been also springing up uh, during this year which is about the same number of people. And I'm like in constant contact with them mm. like every day. So it has changed a lot my work and, and who I'm working with in a way and networking. Very good. But of course, of course I do get, it's, it was a bestseller in, in, in I, don't, I think three continents. So there's yeah. a lot of uh, uh, people who do then uh, contact me as well. So that has been another positive aspect from it. Usually it's people who just ask for advice and, and mm. I'm really willing to help them out. So that was my main reason to really uh, contribute to this book was not to make a fortune out of it, but rather maybe help. I'm hoping that I'm helping at least one person out. And I think that there's been plenty now. So it De was well, well worth worth the trouble. Definitely. And, and again, it, it, it grows your network. So in terms of your other networks, then, you know, you said you, you've developed some more networks and um, I think one of them is it, is it the CX Cares uh, initiative? Do you want to tell, tell us a little bit about that? Of course. So CX Cares got, got uh, into life really uh, from a bunch of us who wanted to just share ideas and, and thoughts and, and feelings during the, the lockdown and and all of this COVID happening around us. And uh, we were, first, it was just about change, exchanging ideas and, and helping each other out. But then we soon realized that we wanted to help everybody else around in the CX profession as well. And then we've got this idea that let's, let's do these uh, reports and publish them. So now we have already done three. So there's uh, one for the hospitality sector, which obviously was the first one since it was mm. probably the one that was most most, most affected by the, 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 the pandemic. Uh, then we did a white paper on the future of uh, customer experience uh, and what kind of skills you would need in the future to be a professional, CX professional. And then the third one that we just uh, published before Christmas and the retail was the retail one. Yeah. So those three. We do have a few coming up still, but uh, let's see when they but, are published. But it's a good, it's a good initiative, though. As you said, the idea of the initiative was to support people, you know, um, and and I see that a lot in the CX community. You know, there's a lot of empathy, there is a lot of support available. Um, 
with that rolling forward, what do you think you'll be doing with CX Cares in, in, in the future? We do have a LinkedIn group uh, that we invite people to as well. So uh, we're sharing ideas there. So it's not just about, I don't know, there's 40 of, 40 of, of us in that, that core group of CX Cares. But now that it's, it's been growing that there's constantly new people coming to CX Cares LinkedIn group. And, and it's just a way of, of you know, exchanging ideas be between CX professionals and support in a way supporting each other by that as well. Brilliant. And I think that that's something that we're going to be uh, continuing to do even if there, there's no need to do these uh, calls with, within our uh, network anymore, with the pandemic hopefully fading away. Hopefully soon, but I think that's a fantastic initiative and it shows good, you know, really good leadership. So uh, well done to everyone involved in that. Uh, so just as we look to wrap up, um, you know, a lot's changed in the last 12 months. Uh, where do you think, um, CX professionals, practitioners, where do you think their attention should be at the moment? And where do you think it will continue to change, uh, you know, over the next six months, 12 months? Well, obviously, I would urge everybody to uh, think about play as part of uh, their uh, everyday uh, development work. Uh, other than that, uh, we're doing a customer experience management uh, international benchmark every year. We've been doing it for eight years in Finland and now this is marked the first year that we did it uh, internationally. And the the main uh, activities that, that companies or organizations at large seem to be uh, focusing on or, or uh, investing their development uh, money on uh, in the upcoming 12 months is uh, customer intelligence. So I think that that's something that is definitely out there and people should be picking picking up the data that they currently are gathering about their uh, customers and clients and make that into a systematic uh, management process so that they can actually at some point benefit from having all that data because yeah. the, the thing that i generally hear from my clients is that hey we have a bunch of data but we don't know what to do with it to do and with it's not it, yeah. and it's not structured or whatever it's everywhere you know mm -hmm. So that's something you should probably start uh, thinking about. Yeah, and, and I like that. Since, since, since everything is now going to digital anyhow, you're going to be needing ways of automating some of your customer experience related. Um, mm. so, so it's important to capture the data, but also important to think ahead what you're going to do with the data. As you say, there's no point just capturing data and having the data. Think about what you're going to do it. And I'm guessing the third thing would be to maybe do some uh, kind of automation or some intelligence to say, you know, if, if someone uh, shows the foreign characteristics, do something with it. Is that fair? I would say that yes, because it's the same thing as, as with voice of customer that it's 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 not, it shouldn't be just you know measuring things. I hate the word measure customer experience because they don't, just don't go to to get well together to me. You should always create the process that supports both gathering and then uh, you, utilizing that information or data and, and then understanding that hey we're not here as our, our profession is not to, to be a fireman you know we're not supposed to be there you know fighting fires but rather we should be looking ahead and what what comes next and what could we do to even to serve our customers even better in the future perfect okay that's a great way to end this look i've really enjoyed listening to you um i think anybody who's looking for a way to uh, come up with a new a creative way to uh, review i think most aspects of their internal cx should seriously consider cx play um i think you know they can read your chapter in the book but i think every time i've spoken to you you've been so friendly i think people should reach out to you is that fair Thank you. That's that nicely said. Uh, yes, uh, I can be reached at bo both LinkedIn. I have a at Sirta Pihlaja, or then we have our own website at uh, www.shirute.fi. Uh, and then, of course, for CXP, it's uh, cxp.fi. So that's short and sweet. Perfect. We'll put the links in the um, in the video. But thank you very much for joining me today. And uh, I look forward to seeing the whole CX Play concept grow over the next decade. Thank you so much, Shane, for inviting me. It was a pleasure.